Hey, econ students, the 2024 AP Micro Free Responses just went public. So let's go over my answers and see how you did. If you watched my predictions video, you know that I thought it was gonna be perfect competition with a negative externality, utility maximizing with elasticity, and perfectly competitive resource market. So I had three out of five, so not particularly good. Now I wanna give a special shout out to Tammy Riggers from Bellevue High School in Washington. She's the AP Econ teacher with the closest prediction this year. She's an amazing teacher, she's a blue hen like me, and she's been to my econ workshops. Great job, congratulations, Mrs. Riggers. In this video, I'm gonna go over the answers to set one. I'm gonna make a separate video and go over the answers for set two. Also keep in mind the official answers haven't come out yet, so these are just my answers, and I might have missed something. If there's any issues, look in the description below for clarification. Okay, here we go with fear response number one. For this one, they tell you it's a perfectly competitive constant cost market, and they started off with graphs. You drew this, a market and a firm, with the firm making no economic profit. Years ago, I graded a fear response just like this at the AP exam reading, and you got four points for drawing that graph. One point for correctly drawing and labeling the market, one point for having that price taken by the firm with a horizontal demand curve, one point for the quantity, and one point for the ATC at its minimum point showing no economic profit. I don't know if they're gonna do that this year, but that's what it was like in the past. Did you get that one right? In B, they say if this one firm raised its price $1, Will revenue increase, remain the same, or decrease to zero and explain? The right answer is decrease to zero. Remember, this is perfect competition, so they're price takers. If they raise the price at all, no one's gonna buy from them. The quantity they're gonna sell is zero. In C, they said there's an increase in the demand for tofu, which they need soybeans for, so there's gonna be an increase in demand for soybeans. You have to draw that on the graph you drew in A. So draw a new market graph with the increase in the demand, the price and quantity went up, P2 and Q2, and the individual firm takes that price and now produces more. And I hope you labeled a new quantity for the firm Q star. In D, you had to explain what's gonna happen in the long run, and since firms are now making profit, other firms are gonna enter because there's low barriers. I don't know exactly what we have to say to get this point, but if you said increase because they're making profit and there's low barriers, you'd be fine. In E, it switches over and starts asking questions about elasticity. In E1, the right answer is inelastic, but they wanted you to explain and use numbers. So if you give the elasticity to demand coefficient, or at least set up the equation, you'd probably get it. Especially if you point out that that number is less than the absolute value of one. For E2, they ask you to calculate the cross price elasticity and show your work. The right answer is 10% over 25%, so 0.4. In the past, they'd give you the point if you set up the equation properly. You don't have to say 0.4, but you had to show 10% over 25%, or 0.1 over 0.25. Okay, that's it for fear response number one. How did you do? Let me know in the comments below. Fear response number two was a positive externality, and they gave you the graph. A is the easiest question on the AP exam. The price is 15, and the quantity is 300. They didn't ask for it, but that's where the marginal private benefit hits the marginal private cost. But the marginal social benefit hits the marginal social cost at 400 units. So this market is underproducing. It's a positive externality. And that means the deadweight loss is right here. The equation for a triangle is one half base times height. The base is 100. The height is 10. You cut that in half, gives you 500. In CI, they ask you about fixing the externality. The solution is a per unit subsidy. And you also had to explain and say a per unit subsidy would shift the marginal private benefit to the right and the new quantity of 400 would be produced, which is socially optimal. The dollar value of that subsidy is the vertical distance between the benefit curves. So from 25 down to 15, or from 20 down to 10, vertical distance is 10. Now D is probably the trickiest question. A lot of students probably mess it up. Putting a price ceiling at $10 does not reduce deadweight loss. It doesn't result in the socially optimal quantity. The reason why is because a price ceiling is a cap on prices. So the price is stopped at $10 and can't go any higher. The quantity produced is gonna be 200. Firms would have no incentive to produce more than that, so that would make deadweight loss bigger. Okay, that was it for question two. How'd you do? Let me know with another comment. For question number three, they had game theory with the payoff matrix. You had two different car companies. A was just asking to see if you understand how to read this thing. If nice ride chooses to improve safety, then what's best for field cruiser? The answer is to improve power. In B, it asks if nice ride has a dominant strategy, and the answer is no. But you had to explain using numbers from the matrix, not just words, but numbers. I would say something like this, if Field Cruiser wants to improve reliability, then Nice Ride is gonna choose comfort because $300 million is better than making $10 million. And if Field Cruiser decided to improve power, 
then nice ride would rather have $32 million and choose safety instead of comfort. So making $32 million is better than making only $25 million. The point is nice ride sometimes chooses comfort and sometimes chooses safety. And so it does not have a dominant strategy. Now in C, they ask you if this is a Nash equilibrium and the answer is yes. But again, you had to use numbers, not just words to explain your answer. I'd say something like for nice ride, they're making $32 million. And if they decide to do comfort, they'd only make $25 million. So they have no incentive to focus focus on comfort when they're focusing on safety. And for field cruiser, they're making $35 million. They have no incentive to switch to reliability and only make $28 million. I could see students write all sorts of stuff for this. So this is actually gonna be a bear for the graders to grade. But as long as you explain using numbers, you're fine. Question D asks something they've never asked before. If they become a monopoly, what's gonna be their total profit? I think the right answer is 70 million because 30 million plus 40 million is the best combined profit. Now in E, they said there's $10 million less profit if they focus on power. So you had to redraw the payoff matrix. Now Field Cruiser does have a dominant strategy. They're always gonna go reliability no matter what. And so Nice Ride is gonna do comfort. The right answer is $30 million for Nice Ride and $40 million for Field Cruiser. Did you get that one? I hope so. Again, time to leave another comment. Okay, that's it. The three responses for 2024. I hope you did great, and I can't wait to find out what your score is gonna be in the summer. Thanks for watching. Till next time.